50 million people around the world are affected by epilepsy. But did you know that 30% of epilepsy cases are actually a result of tapeworm infections? A type of parasitic flatworm known as tapeworm can cause serious damage. Three species of tapeworm are known to infect humans, causing tinnitus and cysticercosis, with teniosolium being the most common. But the disease can be easily prevented. Tinnitus and cysticercosis are part of the neglected tropical diseases, a group of infectious diseases plaguing tropical and subtropical regions, especially people living in poverty without adequate sanitation. They are neglected because they generally get less treatment and research funding when compared to some of the other better known infectious diseases such as HIV AIDS and malaria. Life cycle. Tisolium can cause two different cycles, tinnitus and sister psychosis. Tinnitus is the infectious cycle where tapeworm eggs are ingested by humans and mature into larvae in the gut, causing abdominal pain and nausea. On the other hand, sister psychosis also starts with ingestion of the eggs, but the worms eventually make their way to the brain and leads to symptoms ranging anywhere from headache to blindness or seizures. My older brother recently moved to the city to get higher education. We are so proud of him. But that also means some chores at the farm get passed down to me. I recently started working with pigs and cattle at our family farm. But the work has been busy and I haven't spent much time keeping my workspace clean. There are animal feces around our house, but we deal with it. Anyways, a couple days ago I started getting really bad abdominal pains. I ignored the pain, thinking it would get better eventually. But the nearest hospital is three hours away, so we usually don't see a doctor in if something is mild and wait for the symptoms to go away. But it got to the point where I observed parts of worms in my feces. And that was really weird. We went to the hospital, which is pretty far from our house, and upon getting there, the doctors asked me to give a stool sample on three different days. They said they saw eggs in my stool, which indicated I had tinnitus infection. It's very possible that the feces around our house contaminated our meat. The doctors believe I got the infection by eating undercooked meat, which is likely because I have been less careful when preparing my food since my workload got heavier. The doctor gave me a dose of Prosequantil and I'm slowly recovering. Definitely feeling much better now and no tapeworm segments in my feces. I'm 34 and I'm a house cleaner. I have a couple clients around town and it's tiring but I'm usually able to finish all the houses I have assigned per week. A few weeks ago though, I was getting these really bad headaches like migraines. I just took some pain relief medicine and moved on with my life. But I noticed that my vision would go dark sometimes during the day when I'm doing very strenuous work, like lifting heavy boxes around the house. One day at work, I had a seizure and thankfully, my client was home and took me to the hospital. I got an MRI and was diagnosed with neurosister sarcosis in the part of the brain that controls vision. Basically, there were little cysts or swollen skin in my brain, which caused my loss of vision. The doctors had asked me a few questions and we traced it back to the water I collected with my friend from a river near her house. Since there are pigs and cattle roaming freely in that area, the doctors suspect that the soil and water were contaminated with a tapeworm known as Tina solium, which ended up infecting my brain. I'm very glad that my client was home that day and very thankful that she gave me some financial support for my chronic medication, Prezequantel, to manage my neurosister sarcosis. But I am still figuring out how to afford this medication in the long term. In the hypothetical cases described, 
both patients were able to get medical care, but that is not always the case. Therefore, it is important to be cautious about situations that are at high risk to cause tinnitus and sister sarcosis, such as animal sanitation, consuming improperly cooked food, drinking contaminated water, and recognize the common symptoms of tinnitus and sister sarcosis in order to help yourself, family, and community members in time of need. If available, participate in community volunteer programs for training and surveillance of the disease. Otherwise, create your own program. According to WHO, Tania solium is responsible for 30% of epilepsy cases in endemic areas where people are in close proximity to pigs, one of the main sources of ingestion. There are a few approaches to target this disease. Mass drug administration, health education, including food safety, improved pig husbandry and pig vaccination, as well as improved meat inspection and processing. Most of these interventions involve, in one way or another, some form of education and training, which D-Neglect seeks to help provide through collaborations with professionals in the field of infectious diseases and student groups in countries affected by neglected tropical diseases.